Whoa, that came fast. But wait, got to hit that intro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is the King and I Life podcast, hosted by your man, so touch of the poet and my brother in his joint. So, so Lex up in here. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, as you know, as you know, as you know, you can find us on all your podcast platforms. You can find us on all that social media. Son, so Lex, give him some more of that treatment. And you guys can also, uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can find us at K-I-N-G-A-N-D-E-Y-E-369 at gmail.com. Again, that's King and I 369 at gmail.com. If you have some show uh, topics you want to discuss with us or send in and have us discuss, or if you just want to be a guest on the show, hey, chop it up. Let's get it in. Let's get it in. Um... What else we got on the on the meter form? Um, make sure y'all jump on Apple. We got the subscription jumping off on the twentieth of this month. Yes, um, yes. So yeah, jump on that. We're gonna be live, uncut, unfiltered, all that good stuff on there. So definitely, definitely, definitely subscribe to that. We moving on up in the podcast world. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, man. Um, it's a good day. I think we got a, a, a pretty, pretty, pretty decent topic out here for the people. What you think? Yes, sir. I think <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. I Enough think. to make on, you know, think a little bit. Look here. <laughs> <laughs> full disclosure, full disclaimer, and all that good stuff. Uh, this is a topic that is, you know, touchy. It's a topic that's uh, serious, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those topics that you just got to have with people. Um, but before we get into this conversation, uh, right before me and you hopped on here, you know, do our sound checks and everything, I was talking to a friend mm-hmm. and she suggested, well, we was having a conversation. Right. And I was like, that need to be a a, 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 a podcast topic. Um, you want to know what it is? Oh, uh, sure. The conversation was, have you ever sat around and felt like you just wanted someone to come over and give you head? And that's it. <laughs> Uh, I would be lying if I, you know, was to say I never experienced or had that thought. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. could relate to something like that. That's what that conversation was about, and I was like, that got to be a, a, a podcast topic. So we're gonna work on that. We're gonna bring that to y'all. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yo, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we get into it, uh, last little bit of housekeeping. If you want to. Uh, chime in with the conversation throw it in the um the chat respective chats on facebook uh youtube uh and twitter um if you want to have your voice heard text your name to the number that's right down there and we will bring you into the fold so that you know you know you might not want to text or type whatever the hell is on your mind you just want to get the words out so if you're so inclined to do, text your name uh, to that number, and and we will bring you into the mix. But without further ado, today's discussion. Yes, sir. Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. All right. So today's uh, discussion is hygiene, a key to good health. So and. <laughs> Hygiene seems to be a topic of constant and ever-changing discussion these days. In some cases, it is also becoming trending, oddly enough. Understanding that there 
are several different aspects of hygiene depending on what part of the world or what culture a person is from. This can be a challenging topic to have. Aspects of hygiene depending. <laughs> when some people look at hygiene, we look at it from an overall health standpoint. There is also a population that does not uh, factor in health, but rather their religious beliefs. What about interacting with people that do not share the same hygiene thoughts as you? How does uh, this factor into the overall conversation of hygiene? Uh, um, <laughs> so before we get into it, like like I said, this is not um, it's not about th uh, throwing shade because um, hygiene differs from culture. It differs from economic class. It differ differs from whatever's trending. It, um, uh, you know, health. Uh, and it, it's, it's so many aspects of that. So, um, so yeah. So let's jump into the definition of hygiene. And then let's give the people our definition of hygiene. All right. So hygiene, uh, this is the definition. Conditions or practices conducive to maintaining health and preventing disease, especially throughout uh, or especially through cleanliness. Cleanliness. Sorry. So. With that being said, uh, where I come from, you know, growing up in, in <laughs> the southern states, that was like and still is one of the most biggest things about how we are raised and were raised. My mom was the type that she would get down on her knees with a damn tooth, toothbrush and clean her floors. And I, I will be honest with you, I have done that. Not so much now, but back in my younger years, I would get down on my knees and clean the floors. I'll use a bigger brush, though. <laughs> I ain't had that kind of time. But um, we're always taught that, you know, you got to have a clean home and you keep your body clean. It, it's just a necessity <laughs> uh, as far as our parents were concerned. Right, 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 right. Got a lot of shit going on over here right now. But um, hygiene. Um, I know Sun So Lex do about you know cleaning house and all that stuff. Um, but I'm not gonna take it that far because that that whew, mm, that's a conversation for another day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hygiene for me, uh, it was always. For me growing up, it was always brush your teeth, wash your ass, um, clean your ears, uh, you know, just have that overall cleanliness about your person. Um, you know, just that's the basic thing about it, how how I was raised. Um, and I understand that, you know, a lot of people don't function like that. But for me, in my household, that was one of the main things that you had to do. Um, and, and I feel like in our society, American society, mm -hmm. that is one of those things that is something that you're expected to do. So these I mean, days... Go ahead. It's one of those things that, uh, again, what, the way we were taught is if you were to go to someone's home, if they don't keep their home clean, most likely they don't keep their ass clean. Yes. So that's that how it you know correlates to to my upbringing. Mm. But um, for me, I, I'm the type you know I at this stage of my life I try to keep my household, my car. Wherever I'm going, everything has to be neat and organized. And to a certain point, people say I'm anal like that, but 
<laughs> the thing about it is, for me, it helps me, you know, get through my day. Uh, I, I can tell you, my coworkers, I've gotten on their ass plenty of times. Hey, man, you can take that goddamn trash out. Or, you know, when you find something, put that motherfucker right back where you found it. Because when I go to look for it and it's not there, and mm. I got to scramble around and look for it, that's a problem. Yeah. So, I don't know, just, just being clean and neat and organized is just a part of my life. Yeah. Um. You know what? We're going to get in. I'm going to get into it because I don't want to go off the beaten path. All so right. let's talk about dental hygiene. Um, I, for the life of me. For the life of me. I tell people all the time. The longest relationship I've had with a woman is with my dentist. <laughs> um, and. I, I, you know, jokingly but proudly and seriously say, I've never cheated on my dentist. What I mean by that is, <laughs> I've been going to this dentist since like '97. Mm -hmm. I've taken my kids to this dentist, and you know, the only time that I've had to see that I've seen another dentist was one. She referred me to a dentist to get my wisdom teeth pulled out because that's something that she doesn't do. And when I got deployed, I had to see the dentist for, you know, the military, make sure I was OK to deploy. Right. But my thing about dental hygiene. That a lot of people either don't know, they don't care or they overlook it. That is one of the most important hygiene aspects that you can do should do need to do hands down bottom line and i didn't realize how important that was until i got you know you know older and started you know learning stuff and you know regular you know i've always seen a dentist regularly but right um i have the relationship with my dentist to where like we talk about you know all, all types of shit like i have a relationship with my dentist you know what i'm saying like we talk right. um, and and what people some people just don't understand realize or are ignorant to is that your mouth is like the main thing that brings germs into your body so if you're not brushing your teeth, if you're not flossing, if you're not mouthwash, if you're not doing a whole bunch of things, you know, that bacteria in your mouth, it's like poison to your mouth. It grows and stuff like you swallow that. It gets into your, your digestive system. It, it gets into your bloodstream. Cavities are toxic. Um, you know, people don't understand that, you know, if you don't floss and all that good stuff and you start brushing and stuff and like you floss once and you ain't flossing a long time, your gums bleeding. That's, you know, a sign of gum disease. Like people need to understand. Brush your goddamn teeth. See your goddamn dentist. Well, I can't stand to see someone with a, a raggedy mouth. I just can't. <laughs> I can't stand it. it, it, it. Yo. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you this. What what's your general reaction when you talk to someone in their breath that's really like bad bad? Um when their breath is bad bad, it depends on what you mean bad bad. Because like they, they, they breath they, their breath smell like uh, ass and corn chips. Or you can smell a breath before it, you, you can smell a breath. Before it. You mean that? Yeah, bad. yeah, that bad. Um, I'm like, yo, you gotta check that. Like, yo, like you don't, you don't feel that. Like, have you has your mouth been that jacked up that you don't feel that? Like, when you wake up in the morning, your mouth feel all pacing, like, and you just, just ah, I gotta get that out. Yeah. So. When I encounter people like that, I'm like, I, are you kissing somebody with that mouth? <laughs> like, <laughs> because it's like the germ content in their mouth is so high. It, it's just, ew. That's all that is. That's bacteria and stuff that's just 
growing and festering and shit. And you have you ever eaten like a piece of chicken, you know, steak or whatever, and, and it's stuck in your damn teeth? Yeah, of course. Now, when I was younger, that shit would be stuck in my goddamn teeth for days. And I'm sitting there like trying to suck it out. <laughs> nah, you got to floss that out. Because the thing about it is that is that is flesh sitting in your mouth in your saliva. Your saliva is sending bacteria to kill it. And it's like it's a whole fucking petri dish of hell. Like, yo, come on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. When it comes down to, you know, uh, dental health, you, you got to stay on top of that. I mean, my routine is as soon as I get up, brush my teeth, wash my face, you know, stuff along that line. Um, but if I eat something through the course of a day, depending on where I'm at now, I will be honest, I might have to wait a little bit later before I floss. But uh, before I go to bed, I, I try to brush my teeth and, and floss before I go to bed. That's kind of my routine. I'm not going to say it happens all the time, but I, I try to do that. I got you. I got you. Bro, let me tell you something. I get joked a lot. Let me tell you why. All right. I carry floss in my pocket all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. I get joked sometimes. And oh, then wow. sometimes I pull out my floss and people are like, yo, let me get some of that. I'm like, shit, you don't have none? Like, yo, this is like drugs right here. Like, yo, come on, get us some. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, um, that's key. Um, Cause I, I, I don't want all that plaque and shit. Oh, ugh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I like having a nice smile, so I try to maintain it. And, and yo, once you reach like what, 15, 16, whatever age it is, them is a, that's an adult rack. They yeah. don't come back after they come out. No. They don't come back. And, and uh, I, I know things happen. We ain't perfect. You know, we slip up, and it's understandable. But I just would feel some type of way if I was like had three, four of these jokers up here just out my mouth, like I, uh, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> dental hygiene is important. It's important. It is. It is very important. very important. Um, we we can laugh and joke about this all day long, but um, the thing about it, how I how I feel is that we are in. A civilized society to where we have enough information to where it it, it, it really should not be that big of an issue. Um, that that's that's how I look at that the dental health part. Yeah, I'm gonna chop chop up one story right quick before we get off of that. Uh, so I was working at this one particular place and I worked at nighttime, and one of my coworkers. Uh, we got on the subject of talking about brushing our teeth and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I don't do it. He don't do what? Brush his teeth? Yeah, he said, I don't do it. And I'm looking at him like, dude, I can certainly see why. <laughs> Your ass got some duck teeth. But mm. anyway, he said, the reason I don't brush my teeth is because I talked to my mom about it and my mom uh, asked me to do my uh, teeth bleed or do my gums bleed when I brush my teeth? And I said, yes. So she said, well, don't worry about brushing your teeth or flossing. And when he said that, um, you know, something shot through me like, and you're going to listen to your mom about brushing your teeth. You're a grown ass man and you're not brushing your teeth because your mom recommended that you don't brush your teeth. Dude, that's gum disease. <laughs> <laughs> That's 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 and this, central. This is somebody that choose to back on top of that. So if you can just imagine all of that working within his mouth, okay. And all right. eating all day long. Yeah. Like ain't no way in hell. Mm -mm. Yeah. I honestly do not understand how someone can be in a relationship with someone 
who does not take their dental hygiene seriously and they kissing them in the mouth. I just don't get it. Um, I'm not going to say that my breath always smells like roses and potpourri and all that shit, but <laughs> I can tell you right now, I've had probably two or three fillings in my entire life. I've only had two of my wisdom teeth pulled because I was biting the inside of my cheek. Mm -hmm. And I have a cap on one tooth because I fell and busted my damn tooth when I was in the, like the fourth, fifth grade, killed the to killed the nerve and all that other shit. Those are the only serious dental problems that I have ever had in my 48 years on this planet. Wow. Well, I, I think I've had three, three cavities, three fillings. But my wisdom teeth, I still got. Hey, that's what's up. Don't hurt whatsoever. But anyway, uh, I, I'm happy with my teeth. <laughs> that's all that matters. And they happy with you because they stand in your face. Okay. So body hygiene. Uh, do that one first, my brother. Um, body hygiene. Um. Lately, I don't remember who this sports person was or celebrity or who it was, but this person has said that you don't have to shower every day if you don't sweat. Um, when I heard that, I, I swear I can't remember who said it, but when I heard that, I was like, who? What? Like, ew. <sighs> you have to. See, when we were growing up, um, and we took showers and stuff and, you know, we washed off and, the, you know, the washcloth is dirty and all this, that, and other. Um, a lot of times I used to think that was dirt. <clears throat> um, but it's, most of it is dead skin and you have to get that dead skin off your body. Like, um, the other thing about that is when you, I know when I take a shower, I just feel refreshed. Um, I, I feel like I got whatever was out in the world off of my body. Um, you know, get the dead skin off. You get the whatever is in the air off, you know. Right. Like, I mean, it'd be nice if we had a shower at the goddamn door, right at the front door, so that we go in the house, take a shower, and don't bring outside in the house. But you don't have to. <laughs> um, but the thing about it is, you want to get that off your body because one of the things is we we are we're touchy. We're all we're touchy, and you know, let's say you didn't sweat, but you was out all day, out in in the environment. You know, you lay down, you sit on the couch, you touch your 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 arm or something, you you untie your shoe, um, then you rub it in your in your eyes and all that stuff. Uh, spreading germs. I mean, it's not perfect, but at the at the end of the day, it's like you want to get all of that off your body so that your skin can breathe, that your skin can be fresh. Totally. I totally agree with that. Um, I keep my body as clean as I can. Like I said, I'm, I don't mind taking a shower, but I'm more of a bath person. I like soaking off into a bathtub, turning on my, uh, whirlpool jets and just chill out for a minute. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just like to let the, the hot water soak my muscles Whatever dirt or contaminants on my body, just just let it soak off before I con convince or commence watching myself. But we're gonna, him, we're gonna give him the bougie dude applause. <laughs> bougie dude, lay down the bougie dude. <laughs> but the thing about it though is, um, again, I don't mind taking a shower. It's usually when I'm more in a rush, meaning I don't have time to sit there and soak. 
there are plenty of people in this world who don't feel that keeping a, a daily routine of washing themselves is highly important. Mm. And, you know, who am I to tell you, no, you're wrong? Right, right, right. I'm not going to do that. So, uh, but people know when they smell themselves. You can feel it. Yes. So if you're smelling yourself, then, you know, that's a firm indication right there that you might need to go take a shower or bathe, as they say. Yeah. Um, I can't stand taking baths. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not against baths. Like if if like I rarely f- feel like I need to um, soak. But there are there are occasions when I will, um, and I'll tell you why I hate taking baths. Mm-hmm. I hate taking baths because growing up, um, taking a bath, you know, when you you wash up and everything, and you got the dirt, aka dead skin, floating in the tub. I used to hate dodging that, and, <laughs> and you know, I always felt like, you know, I take a bath, I wash up, get all clean. You know, some you got to stand up. You know, you know, wash you know body so that you know get lather up and everything, and then you sit down to rinse off. I mean, because that's how I used to take baths. I you know take a bath. You fill a tub of water. Do mm-hmm. what you gotta do. Sit down, rinse off. Um, you know, get up and and finish rinsing. You know, the residue off. Um, then you get out. But it was like I always hated that dead skin floating around getting on me. So it's like. I don't want to take a bath. Um, yeah, you could throw bubbles and all that shit in there to, you know, cover that shit up so you don't see it. But, you know, when you take a bath, you just want to sit in there and be in there for hours. You know, especially if you get the water at the right temperature. Mm-hmm. But because of that reason, I do not like taking baths. I, I just don't. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie. I might throw in a little bit of bubble bath and throw in my Epsom salt, you know, as it's saying. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, I feel you. I'm just going to sit there and just soak. I'm going to be in there a good 30, 45 minutes, I'll be honest. Because the way I feel about it is and the way I was taught that by taking a bath, you are actually giving your body a chance to relax, mm-hmm. letting your muscles unwind. Right. You yeah. know, and, and by doing that, you know, when you go to wash off and all that stuff, it's kind of like you're washing away whatever that day brought to you. Meaning if you had a bad day or if you're around people with some negative ass energy or whatever the case may be, it's kind of like let it soak, let it go down the drain, let it be done. <laughs> but I do have a friend that she's she's the type that what she'll do is she will take a bath and be in there for like shit, maybe like two hours. And then after that, she'll go take a shower for like 30 that. more minutes. I'm like, I, that. I know people who do that. Okay. But, but <laughs> see, like, and, um, you know, I, th- I think um, Patrice was agreeing with you, soaking in the tub, all the negative energy, blah, blah, blah. Cool. For me, I'm going to take a shower so that. When I wash that negative energy off me, it's going straight down the drain. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> Go run there. <laughs> like, get away from me. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, but there are cultures. There are um, groups who do not hold that same thought process or that sentiment when it comes to bathing. Um I remember when we were in Germany, um, you know, Germans used to be kind of musty and it's not because they didn't bathe. It's because a lot of them didn't wear deodorant. Um, So, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, The thing that I remember about that culture was a uh, female... She was an actual German, and she was telling me about, you know, why they uh, believe in that system to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, it's not all of them, but she was saying that for them, um, 
the minerals that are on their skin, meaning the good skin, mm -hmm. they are trying to maintain that. So as yeah. where we take a bath every day or, you know, <laughs> once in the morning, once at night or whatever the case may be, they may go to two days or so before they do that. Mm. But again, that doesn't mean that they're not trying to be clean. It's just, mm. I, I guess it's along the line of, I can't say religion, but it's just one of those things in their culture that yeah. you know, culture. they believe in. So right. again, and not trying to offend anyone or speak for, you know, everyone there, just going by what the conversation was for me and her. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to body hygiene, I mean, there, there are so many different practices based on culture, geographic region and stuff like that. Um, like, you know, there are some countries where they go hop in a river and or in a lake or, or you know, in the ocean and bathe. Um, you know, for us, that is like the hell like. <laughs> Wait, you just got in the river and it's like. 50 of y'all in this small space and y'all bathing, but y'all not using soap and stuff like that. But, you know, for us, that's odd. For them, that's what it is. Right. So, I mean, again, it's not that we're knocking anybody's method of hygiene. It's just that um, when you look at hygiene, for us, we're taught, well, us growing up in our culture in this country, it's you better wash your ass. Uh you know, you ain't going to be walking around funky, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Whereas, you know, other cultures, it's uh, some in some cultures, not bathing is also a, a status symbol. Um, so, That's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's talk about um, mental hygiene. Um, this is one of those things, you know, that goes a long way. Right. And, and it can also affect your dental hygiene and your body hygiene. If you don't keep your mind clean and, and you know, fresh and all that other stuff, your dental hygiene and your body hygiene is probably not going to be on your list of important things to do. All right. Um, I'll say for, for mental hygiene, that, that kind of goes along with the uh, your your personal help as far as like you keeping all the negative energy mm -hmm. um, or negative uh, thoughts or however you want to put that away from you that mentally cleaning out your closet as they say right right um, the way I was t one of the ways I was taught growing up is you keep you want to keep your inside just as clean as you keep your outside meaning Definitely. you know you you take an enema every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, you take time to relax and enjoy being you, as they say. If that means just going out on the front porch and rocking in a rocking chair or sitting out, just enjoying, you know, what the Mother Nature has to offer us. Mm -hmm. That's another way, you know, that we were taught. But um, and walking, simply walking <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people don't think about it, but that's, that's a part of, you know, you're in motion. Your body's in motion. Yeah, you're constantly, you know, breathing and taking in the things that are going on around you. That's part of a uh, mental hygiene too. Yeah, 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 definitely, 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 definitely. I totally agree with you on that one. Um, yeah, I, I, there's not much more I can add to that. But uh, what about personal and intimate? Hygiene. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I definitely believe in keeping my balls and my nuts clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I believe in keeping, you know, uh, certain certain parts of my body extra clean, as they say, um, and not always. Choking them, you know what I mean? Like wearing boxes, <laughs> right. trying to keep down the 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 enclosedness, <laughs> letting some air come through, as they say. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of those things I think people fail to realize. Like, I know that certain females I've talked to, they don't like to wear bras at night. 
and at night. Yeah, because they feel like they want to just let their their you know their chest breathe, and I get that. That's another reason, and I, I applaud that. <laughs> Me personally, hey, but um, I think you're being selfish in this conversation when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I had this one friend though; she did not like wearing a bra. Period. She felt like you know this is what Mother Nature gave me. And I'm going to let them do what they do. Hmm. So, you know, shouts out to her. But I, I, it's one of those things. It's your own personal preference. Yeah. Yeah. Patrice says journaling, writing things down helps her clean, clean out her mind. Definitely. I, I can definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, personal intimate hygiene. I agree. You got to keep your balls clean. Um, that's that's one of them things. Again, as a man, you can feel that. Like, why do you want that that murky feeling? It just doesn't feel good. It's it's like, yeah. Um, I'm not a woman. I can't speak for women. No. But I know that it's important for a woman to keep herself clean down there because, hey. You know, women discharge pretty much all day long. And, and you know, that's a way that their body cleans itself. Um, but you have to keep it clean. Um, you know, um, you just... Uh... <laughs> Lovey says just nasty. <laughs> 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 and Patrice says, "Keep your intimate areas clean." Yeah, you gotta you you gotta keep that clean. Um, if if not for, I, I don't even I don't even want to say if not for yourself for the person who's going to be operating down there, right? But you just have to keep that clean. You just have to. I mean, definitely important to wash the day off. Um, yeah. Yeah, do it for yourself. Do it for yourself because some people, you, you can, I know more so with women, you can get an infection down there if you don't keep that thing clean. And, and you know, it's like, again, it's like that goes along with the with, with your dental. If you don't keep your mouth clean, you're going, ugh. It, 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 ah, I got to stop. <laughs> All right, so let me, let me ask you this one then. <laughs> And I know uh, some women on here will, they may agree, and some of them will, will feel certain other ways. Well, but I mean, ladies, if, if you know, either way. As a man, for mm-hmm. myself, when it comes down to particular uh, parts of my body, I keep it trimmed. Okay. I'm not saying bald, I keep it trimmed. Hey, that's, that's, that's coming up down the line. <laughs> we got that on the list. Oh, okay, okay. We got that on the list. We'll uh, get to that. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. We'll, we'll move on then. We'll move on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, who or what defines proper hygiene? Um, I would say for me, growing up, my mother, family, uh, defined what proper hygiene was. Um, but here's the thing. When I was being taught proper hygiene, uh, you know, the discussion was not, well, you have to do this because of this and this because of that. It was, you wash your ass because I said so. Um, (laughs) You know, and, and, you know, all those other, you know, comments that came behind that. Um, And it was, you know, I was, you know, growing up, I was never told, you know, brush your teeth three times a day. Um, I was never told, I was never taught what exfoliation was. Um, I was never taught that it's important not only for women to wash your face, but for men to wash their, your face. Um, I was never taught that you need to clean up under your nails because, you know, 
a lot of stuff gets collected up under that. That's stuff that I've learned as an adult. I'll say, um, again, my parents, especially my, my mother's side of the family, again, these people were very particular about everything. I mean, I remember growing up and being barely, you know, big enough to walk or run and was being scooped out the, of the way and pushed to the side so they could mop or, you know, whatever the case may be. That that was just a given. There are so many times I would wake up at my grandparents' house and I would find my grandmother and my aunts and my aunties, but my aunties and my, uh, my mom cleaning. And this is like at five o'clock in the fucking morning. Mm. Like it was just that serious for them. Um, so when it came down to, to, you know, keeping your body clean, that was definitely at the top of the list. Um, as a kid, you just want to run around, enjoy yourself, do your thing. Go in the house, hop in the bed, wake yeah. up in the bed and go do it all over again. You wasn't thinking about hygiene. Mm-mm, no, but before you went to bed, you were going to take a bath. That mm. that was just a <laughs> give it. Give a damn how tired you are, you finna take a bath. Um. I'll say that, you know, as an adult, though, all those things that I was taught as a kid still stick with me here to to this day. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's one of those things I'm glad that I was taught at such an early age to to keep, you know, again, a clean house and keep my body clean. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the conversation should occur uh, as early as possible. Um, you know, as children, um, we learn by watching. So if we watch our parents, you know, wash up and, you know, do certain hygiene things, we pick up on that. Um, you know, I know as children, you know, we would see our parents or, you know, older relatives, siblings or whatever brushing their teeth. And, you know, it's like, they would give you a toothbrush and you stick a toothbrush in your mouth and you just looking at them doing what they do. That's a part of that discussion. Right. Uh, it's an important part of that discussion because you're learning something. You're learning these techniques. Um, but once you get to the age where you're able to comprehend this stuff, um, you know, that's that's the time to start having those type of discussions. Um, these discussion, discussions, um there are different discussions for different ages and there are different discussions for different genders. Like, um, you know, I, I don't know what age women, I mean, and, and ladies, please chime in. Um, at, at what age are women taught to wash their intimate parts? At, at what age are they Wow. Taught how to do it properly because there is a proper way to do it. So my grandma had me cleaning baseboards and windows when I was a little girl. I believe that. I definitely believe that because back when I was growing up, that, that was the thing. Like I said, my mom would get on her knees and hands and go around and clean the floor. Mm-hmm. So definitely can appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So when should it occur? Uh, different discussions for different ages? Yeah, I was just saying, um, you know, it, it occurs, you know, as early as, you know, a child watching their parent uh, or older siblings or relatives. And, you know, yes, yes, different discussions with different ages because, you know, when you're little, you, you really don't comprehend the the technique of you know hygiene bathing and all that stuff most of the time when we're little you know you got a parent grabbing your arm holding your arm way up here (laughs) they wash you and you know spin you around you know hey all right cool you know as you get older hey you got to do this you got to do that hey make sure you clean your ears and um you know and and 
you know, Patrice says she learned, you know, cleaning her feminine parts as a little girl. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and, you know, once you start getting to the age where you can run your own bath water, you know, it's another conversation. Once you start getting into those teenage years, that's another conversation. But like I said, I don't recall having specific conversations about hygiene. Like when I was told, make sure you wash your face and clean behind your ears, it was never a thing with face soap, um, exfoliating, you know, face mask and this, that and other. It was never any of that when I was little, but that is important. Um, I used to see, you know, my mother and other family members do face masks. I'm like, what the hell is that on their face? Like, what are they doing? You know, but it was never explained to me, hey, I'm doing this to do this. And all of that was never explained to me. And I, again, that's something I didn't learn until I was in my, what, 20s, 30s. And I really didn't take it seriously until I was really in my 30s. You know, I was always in the shower and I would take a rag and, you know, scrub, scrub the dirt off. Yes, I'm exfoliating. You know, scrubbing that dead skin and stuff off my face, getting all the oil out, you know, but I really didn't learn, you know, the the importance or the proper techniques of all of that. Yeah, I say I was before I really understood what I was actually doing, I had to be about six or seven, Um, you know, just always having someone looking over you or uh, constantly watching you and making sure you 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 bathe or whatever the case may be. I remember being about that age before, you know, it started clicking how important it was. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but it's, it's never too early in my opinion (laughs) to teach your kids about being uh, cleanliness or having cleanliness. Um, With my, my young child, I, you know, stressed to him about brushing his teeth and, you know, taking a bath and for him it's a game. Like when I call out and say yeah. it's time to take a bath, he usually runs and hide. So that's that's my opportunity to go find him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's just a game for him, but And the bath is the reward. That's it. So he gets to play with his toys and I give him that little bit of time and then I go in there, uh me or my wife and we'll bathe him, get him out, you know, run through that whole routine and read my bedtime story or something like that mm-hmm. before it's time to, you know, turn the lights out. So. Right. 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 Yeah. So, um, is hygiene taught. Where should hygiene be taught at home or school? What's your opinion? Home. Home. Yeah. I, I just, for me, there's nothing more important than teaching your own child something, you know, mm-hmm. like that. Because again, that's that's something that I was taught as a child, and I'm teaching my child that right. as a child. So you know, by the time he's actually old enough to understand everything, is is already there. Right. So you know, if he decides to have kids, there you go, another generation that's been taught at an early age how to keep himself clean or keep themselves clean. School is good and it's cool, but I think that's kind of like one of the things that should be taught at home. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, especially in the early, early stages of a, of a person's life. Um, um, I mean, wh- where else are you going to get taught? I mean, yes, yeah, Sheila, it starts at home. Um, because I mean, when your child is in those formative years, you know, you have to teach them that. You can't wait until, all right, well, you're in third grade. Now you can go learn how to go do hygiene at school. Um, I can honestly say when I took health class, we were taught, told aspects of hygiene, but I don't think that it was, you know, to the point where, It was explained thoroughly. Um, I can say me growing up, I don't think the knowledge was out there for me to receive at home certain things. Like, again, like washing my face with, with, you know, you know, face soaps and this, that and the other. Because, you know, I remember the first soap I used on my face was ivory soap. And if you grew up in the years that we grew up in, 
ivory soap will snatch all the oils out of your skin and have your face <laughs> feeling like, like tight and you know ashy and like yeah but it's not for your face um so as far as school i think there are certain things that can be taught um in conjunction but i think most of it should be taught at home uh some parents aren't comfortable discussing certain aspects of hygiene with their children oddly enough um as a parent as an adult i think that's kind of crazy but different times you know we 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 have a different look than our parents had on that definitely so uh is your definition persuaded by uh social norms or conventions? I will say to a degree. Um, I say that because, again, when I heard the one celebrity athlete or whoever say, you don't have to shower every day if you're not sweating, I thought that was crazy. That made me want to go just go take a shower. <laughs> um, because to me that's a fad and it's like this person is popular and people follow this person and they you know we're in a time where celebrities say things and you know people hang on their words like zombies or whatever and it's like nah I'm not doing that nah mm -hmm. I mean the thing about societal norms is why would you even want to listen to someone else telling you or teaching you about what makes you feel good or unteaching you? Exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I'm definitely not, you know, with that, especially when it's something so personal. You know right. what I'm yeah. So um, again, you know, whatever floats their boat, not judging them. But I think when it comes down to a personal cleanliness, that's something you should determine um, how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Like some people go a few days without bathing. <sighs> and again, that's that's them and how they feel. But <laughs> for me, I, I got to do it as often as necessary. Meaning if that's every day or mm -hmm. every morning or every night, whatever the case may be, that's just part of my routine. I got to keep clean. Yeah, I know I've had days where I've taken a shower either at night or during the day and didn't go outside at all. And it's like, eh, I'm good. I ain't been nowhere. But, you know, if a good 12, 13, 14 hours go by, you know, I got the, eh, 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 eh you know, got to eh, gotta get that. Yeah. <laughs> we get that. Um, Definitely. So what is your thought on all natural products? I love all natural products. Really? Why? I really do. Um, simply because I'm one of those people, I'm never against putting harsh chemicals on your skin or, you know, within your body. So <clears throat> my soaps, I try to keep all natural. Mm -hmm. um, if I can't get all natural soaps, then I will use um, ivory. So, ivory soap? Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> but I use the mankind. <laughs> you gotta be uh, man recommend. Bro, I ain't used a I ain't used a bar or, or I ain't used no ivory soap in years. I literally that 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 kills my skin. It dries it out too bad. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. Wow. I got PTSD from ivory soap. <laughs> Seriously. I, I seriously do. Um, but I'm not too big on um all natural products. Um I this I don't have full faith and confidence that these products are all natural. That's my thing. Um and it doesn't matter where I I might go to a a flea market or or a um um a cultural shop, you know, whatever the case may be. Oh, yeah, this is all natural, this, all natural, that, made from this, that. And it's like, I don't know that. 
You know, you can package anything to make it say anything. Um, and I just don't know. So I'm not big on um, all natural products. Now, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against them, um, but every product has its pros and cons, just like in, in every product affects everybody differently. Right. Um, so, I mean, even with the name brand products out there, there are things in there that are, you know, somewhat, maybe somewhat harmful to your skin. And who knows? But at the end of the day, whether it's all natural or, or whatever the case may be, as long as I am clean, I smell good, and I feel good, I'm good. I have this thing, though, when it comes down to actual soaps. I have to have a bar of soap. Why? I don't know. It, it just, for me, it makes me feel like I'm actually, you know, getting mm -hmm. the, the dirt and contaminants off my skin. But when it's like the liquid form, I really don't don't care for that. I mean, I will use it, but I'm more of a hard bar soap type of dude. Um, mm, okay. I don't know. Maybe that I, has something to do with the way I was raised, but I, I just prefer a bar soap. I, I, I'll save my further question until we get down to that session because we actually talk about that. All right. Um, aluminum free products. Um, that goes along with that all natural and it's that and the other. Um, I can honestly tell you, I do not take the time to read what's on these labels. Um, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but I know what type of soaps I prefer. Um, and that's just it. I don't, you know, I know some of these things in excess can be harmful to you. Um, so, I mean, I will switch up different brands of soap. Don't know if that's helping or hurting who, who knows. Um, but again, you know, as long as I am clean, smell good and feel good, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, for some people, they really don't care what's, what's in it. You know, like you say, as long as it keeps them clean and makes them feel clean and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but for me, the reason I prefer all natural is because, again, I want something that comes naturally from the earth. And mm -hmm. again, not saying anything bad against any other, you know, soap products. Um, but it just tends to do better with my skin. Right. Um, right. So as long as it, it again gives me a good suds, leaves me feeling clean and, you know, uh, leaves me smelling good, I'm good with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, The Rock deodorant. Never heard of it. Me either. <laughs> 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 uh, that's a new one on me right there, but um, it does exist, evidently. Uh, I don't know. There's, there's so many different kind of deodorants out there. Um, I, d I do know that you know, a lot of the deodorants that are common to us had a lot of stuff in there that was harmful. I mean, because you, you rub it on your, on, your, on your underarm, it gets in the pores in there, blocks the pores, yeah. I mean, block your sweat glands and all this, that and the other, and it had all types of harmful stuff in there. It was causing problems. It caused problems. Um, so, yeah. Um, the one, I will tell you, the one type of deodorant that I will Never, ever, ever, ever in my life use again unless it was a dire emergency. Is spray deodorant. Um, when I was in high school, I used to use spray deodorant, um, and it actually broke my underarms out. It made my skin peel and stuff like that. Um, so I had, yeah, I stopped using that stuff. Yeah, um, I had that same problem. Uh, crazy enough. But my uh, doctor, the one that I actually went to uh, to help me with the condition, she was saying that I was putting too much on. Mm. And she was like, you're not giving your underarms a chance to breathe. Mm -hmm. So she said, what you need to do is at night when you take your bath, um, when you get ready to go to bed, do not put on deodorant. Mm. 
Right. Yeah. She said, yeah. let your skin breathe. And then in the morning, you know, after your shower or whatever, then apply. Right. The yeah. deodorant. But as far as the spray, <laughs> I've found that I like those better than um, the actual roll-ons. Mm-hmm. And again, nothing wrong with the roll-ons. I'm just saying for me. But I try to use the kind that, again, are uh, more sensitive my to my skin because mm-hmm. I, I definitely don't like that feeling of my skin not being able to breathe because I'm choking it down with this damn deodorant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I sometimes struggle with not peel, putting deodorant on at night because, um, you know, when you put deodorant on, it has a certain feel to your underarm. Uh, and for me, it's like a, a cleanliness feeling. Um, but it's definitely good to let them let your pores and sweat glands breathe at night. Um, the other thing that I would like to say about deodorant is, you know, one thing that I do not like is when people do not take a shower and they put deodorant on. <laughs> it's funny. Because, you know, uh, you're putting you putting clean on funk, um, but it's like when you put that deodorant on, you're kind of like exfoliating your skin, and 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 you know, I, and I'm speaking this because I was younger, you know, teenager, whatever case may be, and there were times I would put deodorant on, and you know, either I didn't thoroughly wash my underarms, or it was like shit. Let me get up and just throw some deodorant. I gotta make a run real quick. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, it's dirt on the deodorant, a.k.a. dead skin. And it's like, ew, that's nasty. Um, so, yeah, make sure that, you, yeah, just, I mean, I, look, I understand that a, 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 a roll, a stick of deodorant is is bonded to you and nobody else should be using your deodorant, but, you know, they're occasions when your significant other may you might dab a little on or you might damn I forgot me my deal babe let me let me get some of your, your secret and shit you know that lie and you go about it but hey mm-hmm. you gotta clean that man. You gotta clean that <laughs> so so while speaking of that do you have a problem putting on female deodorant <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, right? I'll be honest. I don't care for feminine products. Mm. Um, and it's simply because I feel like if you're telling me these are these are feminine products, then they're made for feminine, you know, people, meaning women. They're made for women. So mm. I'm a man. I know mm. that, you know, during the course of a day, what I do requires a little bit more umph in it. <laughs> but I, I have had times when you know I'm out and my wife might have you know a, a fresh uh, bar of secret or you know roller of secret or whatever. You just gotta do what you gotta do. So yeah. until I can make other arrangements, I'll go with it. Yeah, yeah, lovey. Definitely not everyone's idea of clean is the same as as, as ours or yours or whatever the case may be. And, and you know we spoke on that. You know it's different culturally. Uh, um, you know, geographically and stuff like that. Um, and she also says, not only that, but it can be a very intimate conversation between parents and their children. Yes, it can be. And, and I think parents should, should be able to, should know how to have these conversations with their children. Um, but getting back to it, um, for the longest time, I felt the same way you felt when it came to products for women. Now, mm-hmm. there are products that are specifically for women that I will not touch. Uh, FDS, you know, feminine deodorant spray and, you know, stuff like that. But deodorant, I'm like, hey, if my underarm is going to keep me from sweating and it's going to smell good, I don't even care. Because, hey, I, I, hey, I just need it. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way and purchase it. But... Um, if if I have it, it was accidentally given to me, or whatever the case may be. Hey, it's the <laughs> owner. 
All I know is I'm not going to be smelling musty. <laughs> That's all I care about, really. That's literally all I care about. Because I used to think it was, you know, it was an ego thing to me. It was like, I'm not wearing that. I'm not a girl. Like, the hell? I'm a whole man. Like, come on, man. Like, oh, uh, unga bunga. Like, nah, not doing that. But, you know, as I got older, it's like, hey, it's deodorant. <laughs> if it's there, I'll, shit, I'm going to use it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and quite honestly, you know, if I was in a situation, it was like, you know, if I'm out with the fellas and, and you know, we in a mixed crowd and it's like, I could borrow my homeboy's deodorant or I can ask, oh, girl, if I could use her deodorant, I'm going to go ask her. Um, Because for me, I, I, I feel... <laughs> I feel like going to ask another man if I can use his deodorant is making me feel like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no judgment zone, but that's just how I feel about it. I'm like, nah, I'm not, nah, fuck that. Like, you're going to be looking at me like, yeah, you my bitch, you're going to use my deodorant. Like, what the hell? I, nah, yo, Shorty, let me use your deodorant right quick. Yeah, let me, shit, let me this <laughs> That's too funny. But yeah, yeah. I, I get it. For me, again, it's some emergency situations. <laughs> but other than that, now, no, I got to stick with my own. Yeah, I think some women do that shit on purpose to see what you're going to do. They give you some damn female deodorant and see what you're going to do with it. Like, look, shorty, I'm I'm securing my manhood. Just I, I need to smell good. <laughs> <laughs> that That's all to it. That is all to it. So celebrity driven ideologies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's and I was talking about the the celebrity who said if you don't sweat, you 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 if you don't sweat, you don't have to take a shower every day. I think that's just fucking crazy. Um, you don't have to bathe if you don't go outside. Not no, you know, you might have a stretch of time where you ain't go outside for three or four days, but you're gonna you ain't gonna bathe three or four days? Like, come on. <laughs> like your your skin your, your 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 layer of skin is still like that layer is dead. Get that off of you! Like, come on, you get in your bed and you know you might perspire sweat through the night. Like, wash that off of you. Um, just just for mental like, uh, get it off of you. Like, come on, man. I forget what these celebrities are saying. They they and. and they might not even following what the hell they putting out. They probably say, "Yeah, you don't have to take a bath every day if you don't go outside." But they probably washing their ass like four times a day. Like get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, when it comes to children, should uh, they be bathed when you can see the dirt? Um. Lovey says, even if I don't go nowhere, I'm still washing my private spaces before I climb. At, at, at the very least, wash that down there, man. <laughs> female sandwich. Um, get, get the, the breast sweat. Uh, under the um, arm. Wash your face. Like the when we was coming up, it was called the important parts. Um, yeah, do that, man. Um Children being bathed when you can see the dirt. Uh, that goes back to what I was saying about taking a bath. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you sit in the tub and you washing up and you have the dirt, a.k.a. dead skin floating around. It's like, oh, I'm clean. But, like, unless you are that goddamn dirty, I don't see how you're going to see the dirt. Like, if you shower at least once a day and, and you're not sweating heavily or, or, or working in a dirty environment, I don't see how you're going to see the dirt. I, I just don't because, like, when I get in the shower, um, now, if I know I've been, you know, out in the yard working, sweating, or, you know, I went for a walk and I was sweating, you know, I expect to see, you know, sweat residue and dead skin flakes all over the toy tub and all this that I, I expect that but on on a regular basis like i hey you you if you 
practice good hygiene, you're probably not going to see that. But again, you know, that determines on, you know, what your culture is and, you know, and all that, your, your geographic region. Um, hell, if you live in certain parts of South America, Africa, the Middle East, and this, that, and the other, in those areas where it's like real dusty, this, that, and the other, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. But here in our culture, it's like, hey, you got to wash your ass. Mm. I'm going to say for kids, um, definitely. If you can see dirt on them, it's time to bathe. <coughs> yeah. But, again, these are kids. They're out, you know, in the yard or playing or doing whatever kids do. So it's, it's going to happen. Only thing I can say is just keep them as clean as you can. That don't mean you got to bathe them like you know, 10, 12 times a day, but just keep your kids clean. They, they'll appreciate it when they grow up. Trust me. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> this is the question right here. <laughs> to shave or to not shave? Wax or no wax? Um, Ladies. Y'all can chime in on the wax and no wax part. So flood the comments um, with that. Yeah, flood the comments with that, ladies. Um, shaving. It was a point where shaving came to me because I hated when I was like in my teenage years, 20s and stuff. Roll down a condom, and that joker roll back up uh, just a little bit, and to get the hair caught in that joker, and you <laughs> you in the middle of a good stroke, and that joker pull, and you like yo, got a trim, got a trim. <laughs> but you know, after I got past that, and, you know, you get older, you learn different things about hygiene and shaving, and this, that, and the other hair. Holds sweat. So, you know, and hair in a moist, dark space tends to stink. So, I am on the side of shaving. What about you? Uh, I would prefer shaving. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I totally agree. I keep that region of my, my personal trimmed mm -hmm. I'm not going to say bald but I say trimmed because I, I just don't like <clears throat> that feeling of knowing when I'm sweating and I'm working and I'm doing all that ah, I just don't <laughs> like that feeling so I prefer to keep myself trimmed <clears throat> mm. now when it comes to uh, the opposite meaning the female mm -hmm. um I personally prefer waxed or shaved. That's just my personal preference. Um, I'm going to keep it PG. Okay. I prefer trimmed or I prefer trimmed wax. Eh, okay. But I don't like a damn bush. I just <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, when I see a, a whole goddamn jungle rainforest down there, I just I just think how much sweat in discharge is that hair holding? Like <laughs> um, but but here's the thing, you know, even women who have a lot of hair down there, you know. A lot of them, you know, stay clean, stay fresh. But my brain is like, oh, that's. But that's in my brain, man. Like, but, you know, ladies, what, what, what do y'all prefer? Wax? No. Shave? No. Um, you know, drop in the comments. But uh, as far as me shaving, Man, it took a while for the proper tools to be made to shave down there. Um, 
I used to have the little trimmers get down there and, you know, you have to be careful because them jokers snag. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> he says wax or sugaring. Um, I forgot what sugaring is. Um, but yeah, and then I got to the point where I was using a, a, a razor. Um, and, you know, but still, it, it depends on how long the hair is. You still got to get the trimmers and get the, the 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 big hair off, and you get the the the, the you know the ra- the razor to you know fine tune. But you know you gotta look if you know how to shave a face, you gotta pull your skin so you can you know get that. You gotta do that down there, and it's like it's that's a whole goddamn operation. Um. Uh, uh, sugaring opens so many nerve endings that allow for extreme orgasms. Ladies, go sugar. Um, but uh, getting back to it, so now we have Manscaped, and you know Manscaped is is a wonder because uh, you can go down there, go to work, you know, get all that, and it's it's less likely for you to. Injure yourself. Injure yourself. <laughs> Although <laughs> one time using my manscape, I, I I I nicked myself, and I was like, "Yo, what the? F- this ain't supposed to be happening with the manscape, like yo." But um, yeah. So yeah, when it comes to shaving, uh, not finna do that. Not finna do it. But with a razor, tell you why? Yeah, I, I tried it one time because this female I was supposed to be getting with, she said she liked that. Uh, so you know, I want to oblige her. You know, right? Give her a clean, you know, surface. So my dumb ass, I'm up here, you know, shaving, and I nick myself, mm. and I nick myself in a spot where I know it was going to be very uncomfortable to to do anything. It took you out the game, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So. Needless to say, this is a piece of, well, this is someone. <laughs> this is someone that I never did get a chance to get with her again. Oh. And this is way back in my young years. Sorry, young years. Don't compare that on mine. But, um, oh, so we hadn't talked about the game, what we're gonna do in the game. You know what oh, I'm saying? Dang. And we we're so looking forward to it. And then that. And then that. I. I basically had to lie. I said, uh, blase, blase, helping at my job. I got to go in. Sorry. We had to knew, reschedule. She knew you was lying. Never got a chance to reschedule. That's because she knew you was lying. <laughs> like says, men, some of us appreciate the trimming. Y'all hold smells too. Exactly. That's why I do not mind shaving because hair holds uh, uh, odor. And yeah. Um, yeah, and, and she she did that face at your uh, your nicking incident. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that takes you out the whole game because it's like now you got an open wound and you don't want to go up in there because ah uh, now you're getting uh, yeah yeah that's that's too much going on uh-huh. too much going on too much going on too much yeah. going on so <laughs> male versus females age specific. Um, do you think women are more, okay, I got to word this properly. All right. The average woman faced with the average man, which do you think has a a more persistence or or more uh, investment in personal hygiene? I'm going to say women. Um, and not to take anything away from men, because I know plenty of men who are very particular about how they keep you know, their bodies. Um, but I just think that, and again, this is not all women. <laughs> it's not all women. I ain't going to tell that lie. But they're, Definitely women, lovey. <laughs> I, I, I think that for the majority, women are more likely to take care of their bodies mm-hmm. than you know 
men, especially when they're younger. Um, I think it's the opposite, though, depending on age. As you're young, you might not care about it as much, but the older females get, they tend to care about it a hell of a lot more, um, at least in my, my personal experiences. Mm-hmm. But for men, uh, I just always been that type to, again, some people call me anal like that. Mm-hmm. But at this stage in my life, all the men that, you know, I come into contact with, everybody keeps themselves together, meaning beards trimmed and um, nails, you know, clean and, and things along that line. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> like you said, maybe I should have said women should. <laughs> 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 you know, says women. Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can definitely yeah. agree that um, uh, women tend to be more um, invested in in that, and and I want to say that it starts it starts at home. But um, don't quote me on this because I'm not sure. I just have a lot of female friends who say a lot of things, but um, I feel like in their circles, in their groups they're more prone to compare and contrast hygiene products than men are. Um, We're not going to sit around and be like, yo, bro, you got to try this soap right here, or you got to try this shave cream or the shampoo or this face stuff, this, that, and other. We're not going to do that. Um, And then for us coming up, you know, a lot of commercials were not targeted. When it came to hygiene, it wasn't targeted towards us. Um, So it's not a thing that you know, we would sit around, you know, have a drink, smoke a cigar or shoot some dice to or be on a gun range. Be like, blah, blah. Yo, yo, you try that new uh, uh, dove for men. Blah, blah. We're not doing that. But, you know, <laughs> women, they're 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 quicker to compliment each other on their skin, their smell and this, that and the other. And they will spark up a damn conversation with a complete stranger. Hey. What you use on your hair, what you use on your face, and 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 they get into a whole conversation that turns into a um a, a panel discussion. For right. us, it's not that serious. Um, I think we need to be more serious like that because, um, you know, I know when we look at men, our our peers, not you right. know, look at men. When we look at our peers, observe our peers. It's like most of them. Eh, you might have some decent looking skin. You might have a scr- but but you're not. We're not looking at that dude. And like I wonder what, what what my man is using in his beard because his beard is shiny. And, you know, blah blah blah. Especially men and of of our men, um, we're not prone yeah. to do that. Um, yeah, we're do that. I think we probably do that to the extent with like maybe oils and colognes, but not face soaps, body soaps. And, and, and things of that nature. Um, I can honestly tell you, uh, when I go into the store to get products, I look at, when, the, especially when it comes to face soap, that got oatmeal, it's exfol- exfoliating, I'm going to grab that. Uh, shampoo, um, tea tree oil, uh, blah, blah, blah. all right, let me grab that. Um, when it comes to soaps, it's like, hmm, oatmeal, honey, that, blah, blah, blah. All right, let me grab that. So I, I think I think I just think women are just more invested and in, in, in purposeful with it. And, you know, they're influenced by their peers and, you know, whatever products that they're throwing on TV or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I mean, again, for 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 us, um, you're never going to hear us talking about. Hey man, you tried out that that new soap, so and so and so and so, <laughs> or you, you're never gonna see one of us come talking about. You know what, bro? I've been you know around you all night, and you just you smell good, bro. <laughs> what? Like, yo, what, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, what's going? You, you finna get a slap? So like, <laughs> it's not a ego. Punch. It's the ego, man. Yeah, you, you're never gonna hear you know me and like us say shit like that, but um. I will. One of the main reasons I I pick females, right? Because, you know, being out in society, um, when you pass by a female, she carries that certain energy and that certain aroma. Mm. So 
when a female pass you by and she smells good, you can't help but to take notice. Like yeah. just last week, uh, I was at a gas station, right? And not just a regular gas station, a, a, a trucking gas station. Mm-hmm. But this one female, her and uh, her husband were like the aisle over. And, you know, all the smells that come along with being at this damn gas station or this trucking gas station. When the wind just picked up slightly, I smelt her perfume and that shit was amazing. Oh, damn. I, I started to say, excuse me, miss, what is that? I need to get that shit for my wife. But um, mm. it, it, I don't know. It, for me, it's just women tend to do that. They they care more about you know their appearance and the way they smell when they're out in public. Again, some, not gonna say all. <laughs> mm. So so Lovey says yes. Same for men passing by women. If he smells good, I'm saying hello and tell him he smells good. Um, funny story. Um, I used to be a big 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 right guard person, mm-hmm. and. A certain right guard, like when you take care of your body, um, certain products that you put on your body are enhanced by, enhanced by or degraded by your body. Okay. Um, so like I used to be a big right guard person. Now I, I don't use right guard that much because, you know, I used it too much to the point where it was like, doctor was like, yo, you got to use a different deodorant because your body's getting used to this, that, and the other. But mm-hmm. I would wear right guard, and you know, some women would be like, what kind of cologne you got on? I was like, I don't have one cologne. What's that? It's a right guard. Like, are you serious? Yeah, right guard. I'm not a big cologne person. I'm not a big oil person. I'm not a All big right. fragrance person, but I could... There's certain deodorants that I put on that just smell so fucking good on me. Like, yo, it's, it, it just makes me smell like a god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if it make you feel like that, rock with it. Homie. That's all I can say. Yeah. And Lovey says, yes, it's enhanced by your natural body chemistry. And and that's and that goes all the way back to your dental hygiene, your body hygiene, your mental hygiene, um, uh your your, your personal intimate hygiene. Whatever you intake in your body, cleanse your body. It just it just pushes all of that out, and it it just I mean I don't I don't that makes you feel good mentally that someone notices that you smell good, and it's like they're not even trying to smell you, and you're not overdoing it. So the thing about me, I, I have a system, believe it or not, when it comes down to personal hygiene, right? The type of soap that I use is my first line of defense. Mm. Then I have a body spray, mm-hmm. my second line of defense. And then my third is I'll throw on some cologne. But I only put my cologne on my clothes. I don't put it on my skin. Mm. So it's kind of like I try to make sure that the smells work with each other. That is very Better important. Clashing. I don't I don't care for that. Very, clash. very important. Um, you know what? Just to even further go on that, I can't stand. Well, I'm not gonna say I can't stand. I d- I just don't find it appealing when women overdo, well, anybody for that matter, but I've only I've mostly come across women that overdo it with perfume. It's like you smell them. 10, 15 feet before they get to you and you can smell them like 30, 45 seconds after they're gone. And it's like, yo, like, did you wash your ass today? Um, <laughs> like, like, what's going on? Are, 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 is, is your mental good? Are you feeling insecure? Um, what's going on with you? Because it's like to put on that much fragrance for anybody to do that, it's like it, it makes you wonder where they at where their head is at or what their hygiene practices are. Because to me, if, if I, if I'm passing somebody and they, and I smell their fragrance, it's like, yo, mm, nah, I gotta mm -mm, stay away from you. You just not clean. Just, just not clean. Um, 
And I've known people in high school who would, you know, they wouldn't take a shower, but they'll put all that, you know, body spray, cologne, and all that on. It's like you uh, you putting smell good on fuck. Like go wash your ass. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like the 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 uh, whatever, man. Come on. I met a female that was like that though. She puts on a little bit more than what's required. But her, her rationality was, I want people to smell me before I get there. The fuck and then of... when I leave, I still want them smelling me because they'll remember me like that. They're going to remember how like, goddamn ridiculous you smell. Okay. Well, she was a bit of a neat freak, too. So. That's no, she got problems. Like, yeah, Lovey says a little goes a long way. If it's, if it's perfume, spray it in the air and walk, and, and walk through it. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Or like, honestly, I, you know, I'm not a cologne person, but I was told, hey, you put it there, 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 there. Keep it moving. You know, I, I just don't get the the over spraying. Like, I don't want to remember you like that. Like, and and God forbid it, it's a female that you're dealing with. And you go to be intimate with her and you want to kiss her on the neck and all you taste is perfume. That is a turnoff. <laughs> a serious turnoff. Like, yo, I, ugh. I'm sucking your neck and it's like, ugh, that perfume don't taste good. No, no, I definitely don't. But I get it. Um, what are some common practices for maintaining personal hygiene? Yeah. Bath or shower, hey. <laughs> soap or shower gel, loafers, washcloths, poofs, exfoliating gloves. So, we already talked about the bath or shower. I prefer the shower because I right. like to hey, get that off and it goes right down the drain. I don't want to, you know, be sitting in the dirt, aka dead skin. And mm-hmm. it, look, because I, <laughs> I literally be dodging that shit. I'd be like, I don't want to, uh, it's going to get on me. And then I got to drain the water and take a shower in order to feel clean. That, that's why I don't like taking baths. But, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Now, soap or shower gel? You said you prefer the bar soap. Yeah, I prefer the bar. Um, Be sure to change that loofah regularly. Yes. <laughs> yes. For many reasons. Um, I prefer... I'm good either way. Okay, so so here's how I do. Um, in my travel bags, um, I typically carry a bar of soap. Um, like, if I go somewhere for a weekend, if I go away for a National Guard or something like that, I typically carry a bar of soap and just call it a day because I just, you know, that, you know, on planes, you can't take a, a certain amount of, you know, whatever, whatever body wash or whatever. It has to be a little tiny thing. And I just feel like that's not enough. Um, I can make enough if I carry the right things, but I just think it's more convenient for me to carry a bar of soap at home or, you know, somewhere, you know, that, I'm, you know, chilling or that feels like home. I'm going to use body wash. Um, the one thing that I think with, well, why do you not like shower gels and body washes? I just feel like um, it feels more like a paste to me in some cases. The hell are you I feel like it, it's something that's just going over my skin. It's not actually washing my skin. So that's why I just prefer body. Uh, <laughs> that's funny as shit. Bar soaps. I mean, if you look at it, it's technically the same thing. You know, you get the bar of soap, you lather it up, you get the shower gel or body wash, lather it up, you go to work. Yeah, but I don't know. I just prefer having something a little more solid. Um, uh, okay. As I'm washing myself. It, tomato, it tomato. Like I'm, I'm getting a little bit more cleaner, but. <laughs> it's just me. It's just me. All right. So, so my wife, we've had that, that same debate because she's uh, like, I don't see why you prefer the, the bar of soap either. But anyway. I'm going to tell you one thing why in my later years I prefer 
shower gel or a body wash over a bar of soap. Growing up, it was the bar of soap that was in the bathroom mm-hmm. that everybody used. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? We, we, we all grew up this way. It's the bar of soap in the bathroom that everybody uses. As I got older, I felt like that was the nastiest thing ever. Because here I am, I go take a shower, I grab that bar of soap, I put that bar of soap in my washcloth, I wash my body, I wash my ass, I wash, I wash, I wash. Put the soap back. The next person is doing the same goddamn thing. Um, uh, she says that part about the tub. I don't want that dirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's just say you have a household of five, six people. You have five or six different people grabbing that bar of soap, putting it in their washcloth, washing their ass, <laughs> washing their nose, washing their back, all that, and they put the bar of soap back. So for me, um, oh, yeah. All right. Well, same thing. Same thing. Bar so, you know, whatever. But um <laughs> but for me, it's a hygiene thing because if it's not my bar of soap, I don't want to share that soap. I don't want community bar of soap. That's just, you know, how I've come up in my later years. It's just like, you know, again, um and this kind of goes with the loofah, washcloth, poof, exfoliating gloves. If the average person uses the same washcloth to wash their ass two, three, four days or however long that you feel comfortable using one washcloth to wash your ass, you have to think that washcloth is going up in their ass crap. They're putting it on that bar of soap and then you're coming behind them and you're taking that bar of soap that was in on that washcloth that was in the crack of their ass and you washing their ass on your body. That's how I feel about a bar of soap. Now, if it's my bar of soap, I'm good. And that right there, <laughs> what Lovey just said right there, that is so disgusting to me. Seeing somebody's hair on the bar soap, it's like, yo, you use that bar soap. You didn't have enough courtesy to make sure the bar soap was free of any of your DNA before you put it back. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's too funny. I understand, though. I understand because, you know, in my household, we all have our own particular bar of, of soap. Mm-hmm. Um, ain't gonna mention any names, but somebody in my house uses three different bars of soap. I don't know why, but they do. But me and my son, we have our own personal bar of soap. <laughs> look, look, women women have techniques, okay? They they have a, a, a bar of soap for, for pre-wash. They have a bar of soap for deep clean. And they have a bar of soap for relaxing. I get it. I totally get it. Y'all, y'all have methods to y'all madness, so I'm yeah. not knocking y'all, but someone said hoo ha. <laughs> y'all bar soap for the hoo ha. <laughs> yeah. I understand um, that part. Yeah, hoo ha. That the first time I heard that word, I fucking damn it. <laughs> Hell. Oh. I was like, what the fuck is a hoo ha? No, no, not at all. I was just simply saying. Um, her her method is is different because three bars of soap is what makes her feel comfortable. Um, me, I'm good with just one bar, and my son he uses one bar on personal bar. But again, um, I think yeah. females who go through such extreme I I can't say extreme for me it's extreme, but for them that's the norm. Right. So yeah. 
if a female feels that she needs that, then cool. Because again, at the end of the day, it's all about what makes you feel clean and healthy and especially about how, you know, relaxed. Yeah. So I I, I get it. Yeah. It's definitely not a judgment thing. It's, you know, as men, we sit there like, what the fuck? What are you doing? And and they will sit there and break it down to you and you're sitting there like, oh, but hey, you know, you got a bar soap for this. You know, you got a bar soap for that. And then you got the bar soap that just says, ah, I totally get it. Um, so <laughs> I, I just think um <laughs> That's why True. I say I get it. I, I True. get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, women have like so many different soaps and and yeah, we get it. But for us, it's like, you know, our, our body is like just one one thing. It's like we have all external flesh. It's not like we can grab our meat and say, this is the soap for in here and shit. Like, no, nah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you mess no. around and be like, oh. Oh, yeah, oh, I, can't, I gotta hold this pee until that pain go away. Yeah, it, but, it's very um, uncomfortable when you accidentally get soap in there, man. It's yeah, very uncomfortable, depending on the soap. Um, yeah. So, so with that being said, loofah, washcloth, poof, exfoliating gloves. Um, the one thing with body wash is best with a loofah or a poof. Um, I, I think a lot of people use a washcloth with body soap i mean body wash and gels um to me it it causes you to use more than you need because with a regular washcloth i've learned that it takes an uh an unusual larger amount in order for it to lather properly but if you use a loof or a poof you know you put that little that little dab in there and and for whatever reason they are some symbiotically made for each other and you just get that good lather um for the longest time i hated loofahs i I thought they (laughs) and i hated them because i was under the impression that they didn't get you clean Mm -hmm. but after using them it's like oh they're better at it to me i could be wrong but for me and to me they exfoliate the skin better than a washcloth yeah I, I could definitely see how that that would work. Um, I prefer either a loofah mm-hmm. or cloth, but there are some people who just use the bar of soap, and I'm like, Aye. how how do that work exactly? <laughs> you just rubbing the the bar of soap on your skin. How is that? Right. You know, extracting <laughs> the dirt and grime and all that, exactly. but. Again, no judgment, but none. Some some people feel comfortable with that. I'm, and you know, I don't know where that practice originated or where it comes from, but growing up, you would see those commercials where they just grab the bar of soap and just rub the bar of soap across their skin, put the bar of soap back, rinse off, and feel clean. And it's like, <laughs> first of all. You didn't exfoliate anything. You didn't get the dead skin off. Um, you you didn't get the you the the you didn't get anything off your body. All you it, it it's like spraying <laughs> wax on a car, like and, and not buffing it. You just nah. You gotta exfoliate. You got to. Um, what about have you ever used the exfoliating gloves? Um, I will be honest. Uh, as a man, I felt like the uh, expo- exploding, exfoli- excuse me, exploding gloves, tongue tie. But um, I just felt like that was more like a, a feminine thing. Really? But until uh, someone, you know, I was in a relationship with turned me on to it, she was like, just try it. Just try it. So she bought me my own special manly gloves. Mm-hmm. I tried it. And, <laughs> yeah, manly gloves, cause you know I got big hands, but I got big hands. Okay, 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 okay. But they do work. Oh um, yeah, oh yeah, they good. So, they good. As long as they manly gloves, you good. Um. So 
that takes me to the ne- next thing I want to throw at you with this. When it comes to loofah, washcloth, poof, exfoliating gloves, how long do you use them before you change them out? I will say with the exfo- exfoliating gloves, I might uh, keep them roughly about a week and a half, somewhere around there. Then they're going to probably right at a week. Mm-hmm. But a washcloth, um, I probably use it twice before I get another one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so like um, Lovey was saying, you got to change up your loofah regularly. Um, for me, I can honestly say younger. I didn't know any better. I used to use that motherfucker till it smelled sour. Um, <laughs> and, and again, and, and this is what I'm talking about. If you're not taught certain things, you just don't know. So like I never knew or never really paid attention because I wasn't taught that, hey, you got to change that every you know couple of days or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. at least five days at the at the extreme most. Yeah. Um, but it's like that joker would smell sour. Um, then your towel would s- smell, you know, because, you know, the water and all this, that and the other. Then you draw off and be like, damn, I stink. And it's like, why do I stink? I just took a shower. But hey, them years I ain't know better and I wasn't taught properly. So it was like, eh, I don't know. Um, but I think every two to three days, four, four days, five days at the most, chuck that joke and get a new one. Um, Cause she just want to stay clean. Um, um, yeah. Um, another question for you. Um, All right. Because I, I, as as an adult, mm-hmm. I've heard this conversation with people, and, and I just found it interesting. Okay. And they would say they use two washcloths, one for their face and one for their ass. Um, when you use a washcloth, do you use more than one? It's a good question, and I've been engaged in that very same question. Um, I do use more than one. And mm-hmm. my system is I keep my washcloth, you know, either in my bath area or my shower area. And I keep my face cloth, you know, right by my sink. So that's all I use it for is my face. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Let me ask you this. All right. Why do you use a separate washcloth for your face and for your body? Uh, Convenience. Convenience? Yeah, just convenience. So are you against washing your body with the same washcloth that you wash? Are Are you against washing your face with the same washcloth that you wash your body with? No, I'm, I'm not against it. Um, I can see how some people have a problem with that. But again, if I'm going to use it to wash my face and my body, I'm only going to be using it twice mm-hmm. before you know I discard it, meaning throw it in the laundry and get a new towel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Lovey just spoke what I was getting to because I don't want to wash both my ass and my face. <laughs> <laughs> heard that argument um so i was i was posing that because i've heard a lot of people say well i'm not gonna wash the wash my ass with the same washcloth that i wash my face with but i'm like well you washed your ass with that washcloth but then you wash your whole body with that washcloth so don't you think you need three <laughs> <laughs> One specifically for your ass crack and your, your crotch area one for your body, um, and then, hey, one for your face. Nope. If it's used for bo- both face and body, I get a new washcloth the next day. It will be used only once. Cool. Understandable. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I'm good with that. But I think I, I've heard so many people 
get an attitude about the conversation. I'm like, you must be fucking lying because there's no reason for you to get all hyped and attitude about it. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's really not that deep. Kind of way, like, am I calling you out on your bullshit? Like, yo, um, I don't use a washcloth for my face most of the time because I have exfoliating face wash. So I'm eh, I'm getting it out. I'm, I'm I'm doing it. So I typically don't feel the need for one, but I will use one in the mornings when I'm just wa- washing my face or wi- wiping the crust and all that out of my face. Um, so I'll use a washcloth for that. Um, with, you know, loofahs and stuff like that, loofahs and poofs and, you know, you definitely have to have something separate because I, you know, putting the loofah on your face to wash your face, I think that's just like buffoonery. Like, like you putting a whole... <laughs> <laughs> you putting the whole loof in your face, <laughs> like, nah, that's not good. Nah, come on now, let's let's get grown up. Yeah. Um, the, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying, you know, again, people have different preferences for, you know, when it comes down to actually how they use their their washcloths or whatever the case may be. Um, I've known some people, you know who just use a washcloth for everything. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, to use their own, but yeah, I, I just can't see. That's how I was raised. You won for everything until, you know, I got older. It's like, eh, you know, let me use this for this. Um, Levy says, even when you exfoliate, a washcloth can still be used to remove all the dirt and be sure your exfoliation, your exfoliate comes off. That's very true. Um, and, and, and I definitely agree with that because it's sometimes... I've used my exfoliating face wash and I'm thinking I got it all off. I get out the shower. I'm looking in the mirror and I got, you know, residue in the corner of my face. And, and like, oh man, I got this on my face. I got to go wash my face again. Um, so yeah, definitely with that. Um, and you know, the last thing about that, how often should these items be laundered? I say it depends on how many you have. Honestly, yeah. Um, yeah, I have enough to last me a good two weeks, um, at least two weeks. No, if I use one for three, four days, I got enough to last a month, a good month. Um, <clears throat> I know one thing that I started doing as I've gotten older, I stopped going to buy to Walmart and, you know, buying them cheap, thin ones. Oh, uh, I can't stand that. I get the thick ones now, you know. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. I can't. The the thin ones is they they like fucking you know, cleaning rags. I got to get the thick ones that's, you know, got some weight to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I understand. Have have you ever used a bidet? Do you even know what that is? Yes, I know what a bidet is, but Cause, cause most, I, you know, most most of our people don't know what a bidet is. <laughs> what are your I, thoughts on it? I've used one one time. Uh-huh. It was at this particular hotel I was staying at. But I could see how it could be useful. But, <laughs> but at the same time... <laughs> um, he said, I can see how it can be useful. It's, it's, I don't know. As a guy, for me, it feels different. <laughs> and I'll put it to you like that. It, it just feels different. It feels kind of wrong in in a certain you uh, aspect. Hilarious. But Yo, again, I, I I can see how they're they're useful. Um, me, I, I just keep wipes uh, in my bathroom. But anyway. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, wipes bidet. Same function. Um, for the longest time, I was like, what the hell is a goddamn bidet? <laughs> um, a, a bit. <laughs> but, you know, they use those, you know, over in Europe and stuff. But yeah, um, true. I have a bidet on my toilet bowl. Um, I love my bidet. Um, you know, here's the thing. For years, we've been taught to sit our ass on the toilet take a dump and wipe till you see no more brown or whatever color your school is <laughs> at, at, at that given moment. 
but you're not really clean, clean. And and the thing about it is, you know, you may get all the the the, the mass waste off of you, but you're smearing it into your skin, and then you sweat, and then it adds moisture to the dried smear, and it creates an odor, or you know. Next thing you know, you got a shit stain. Yeah. <laughs> you got the stains, man. You got dingleberries and stuff. So um so I love my bidet. I love my bidet. It it took me a while to get used to it. Um, because it has like four settings, and sometimes I'll be like, woo, woo you know, be ready to fly off like a rocket. But um <laughs> Patrice's tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Hey, you, you, you're telling our age here. Yeah, we used to call them tracks back in the day. But <laughs> I, I, I love my bidet because it it um it makes me feel clean. One, um, so in my master bathroom, I have a bidet, I have wipes, um, and I have toilet paper. I rarely use the toilet paper. Um, I'll use it, but I don't use it as much because I prefer the bidet, get the white, air dry a little bit, then get off the toilet bowl and roll. Um, <laughs> if I'm in a rush, dry. if I'm in a rush, I'll hit the bidet or the wipes and then, you know, pat dry with the toilet paper. But I, I think to me, hygienically, I think using bidet and wipes is just so much cleaner. Um, then you never know. You know, you might have those moments where it's like, uh, spontaneity kicks in, and you know, shorty might want to go down there and, and and you know, eat the grapes off the tree, and you know, <laughs> you might not be smelling too good, and it'd be like you be all piping ready, you'd be like yeah, but she go down there and be like ah, bloop, it's like, <laughs> um, I've had people come to my house and be like, oh, Yo, you ain't got no toilet paper, use the goddamn bidet. It's like, what's that? Oh, I didn't see that. It's like, you ain't see that. Like, the fuck? Did you just go sit on random bowls and shit? You don't look where you sitting? Like, come on, man. I got a whole bidet there. And when them jokers be, <laughs> when them jokers be fighting over the toilet paper and be like, hey, I got a bidet. I'm good. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, you get a bidet off Amazon for like 40 something dollars, bro. Get it. My thing about toilet paper, though, I'm very particular about my toilet paper. You have to be. I like thick toilet paper. You have and, to. If that shit separates while I'm trying to use it, Bro. I'm about to have a goddamn fit, Carl. That one ply, two ply? <laughs> look. No. Or, or that toilet paper that, oh, uh, look. In the military, certain places you go, that toilet paper is like cardboard. I mean, you take that thing across your 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 sphincter hole, and you might scrape that joker up. <laughs> then you know, you're like oh damn, no oh, ouch. Then you might take a dump later, and and then then that joker, you know, um, running through that, and then you got blood on it. It's like, wait, am I on a cycle or something? Like I'm an old dude. I, like I got blood down it. Like nah, you got it. You got to be got it. You got to choose the toilet paper right, and that that one ply toilet paper. <laughs> Uh, you mess around and wipe your butt and your finger go through it. Now you got stuff up under your fingernail. I'm like, ah! <laughs> okay. So I want to untell the story about this one guy I met, right? Um, my boy did a little time, right? Uh-huh. So we're on the conversation about, you know, bidets um, and toilet paper. But he said what he would do is when he got done in prison, he'd just dip his paper off into the water and then wipe his backside. And we we're looking at each other like, so how in the hell do that make sense now? <laughs> because you're trying to get clean, but you dip your paper off into shitty water or pissy water. How do that make sense? But Wait. anyway, yeah. I'm 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 I, I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did. I'm going to leave it all the way. Like that alone. Yes, sense. that's yuck. That doesn't make sense at all. Yuck. Mm. 
So favorite or uh, specific personal care routines or practices? Um, I really don't have a routine or practice other than um, make sure that I, you know, shower, um, you know, wash my hair every two, three days. Um, even though I shave my head, um, the one thing about my scalp is it gets oily. Mm -hmm. And people be like, oh, you put like grease in here? Like, no, I don't put grease in my hair. I have an oily scalp. So, and it clogs my pores, which causes me to sweat. So, I have to wash my hair, you know, every couple of days or whatever. Um, um, so, that's one thing. Um, definitely trim the nose hairs because you don't, I, I, I just, I think it's just net disgusting to have, see people with hair coming out their nose and ears. I just, I think that's just so disgusting. It's ill. Um, you know, shave, you know, my, my, my private parts, you know, probably every two, three weeks. Um, uh, I make sure, I, I try to make sure under my nails, is my fingernails clean every day. Um, I think that's about it for me. I'd say, um, as far as bathing, I bathe pretty much every day. Yeah. Um, like I said, if if it's a weekend, I know I'm not going anywhere. I don't go outside my house. Yes, I, I might skip a day. I'll be honest. Um, as far as my nails, I'm the type of dude, I can't stand having fingernails because I can't stand having damn dirt underneath my fingernails. It's, it's nasty to me. Um, as far as washing my hair, it's a process with these damn mm -hmm. dreads. So I at least try to wash them. If I got it freshly done, I may go one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. But anything after that, then I try to at least wash it once uh, every three days or, or four days. Um, mm -hmm. As far as anything else, as far as like going out in public, I have to make sure that my body is clean. I, I, right. Again, if I feel dirt and grime on my skin, I go take a goddamn shower. And then right. I go run my errands or whatever. I'm not going to be all out there smelling unlike myself. <laughs> <laughs> smelling yeah. unforgettable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, not, not so fresh. Um, I just have to do that. That's what I feel like. Yeah. Um, so as far as your fingernails, do you bite your fingernails back to where no. there's no white? No, I, it's very rare that I even bite my fingernails. It, only time I, I might bite my fingernail is because I felt like that one particular fingernail has gotten too long. Mm. So again, I, I try to keep them as trim, you know, as often as I can, but there are times when, you know, I, it may slip my mind and they might get a little bit longer than what I like for them to. Mm -hmm. But I can't do the whole nail biting thing. To me, I don't know, it just feels weird to me. Mm. Interesting. Uh, I can't do the whole fingernail clipping thing. It feels weird to me. Like, I have to, you know, clean up under my nails and I have to bite them in order to trim them. Because mm -hmm. every time I've had a manicure or had my nails filed, it's such an irritating feeling. It's like nails on a chalkboard. It makes me scratch my skin, and it, it yeah, it makes me put welts on my skin. So I cannot, I cannot get a manicure. I cannot. It irritates the hell out of my nails. So, um, yeah, like when my nails get too long, I bite them, and I and I, for the most part, bite them perfectly round, um, and I might have to like take my finger and do like this to you know smooth them out. But I cannot, I cannot do manicures and filing and all that stuff. Um, ironically, I have very strong nails, mm -hmm. and 
to me, it's funny because I know a lot of women who can't grow their natural nails because they're brittle. And it's like, like, okay. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I keep, you know, I keep a decent length because one thing I cannot stand and, and I've made this mistake before is I've had my nails trimmed or bit back far to where the tip of my finger comes out past my nail mm-hmm. and you hit something and it just hurts because those nerve endings up under there are too exposed. Yeah. Like I have a person, a close friend of mine, he lets his nails grow, but he keeps them clean. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'd never ask him about, you know, why you let your nails grow? But anyway, he lets them grow, but he keeps them clean. So I'm like, hey, if you like it, I love it. But not, you know, like female long, like. Right, right, but right. Manly long, I guess you can say. However long that makes him happy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. so as long as you keep them clean, dude. Right. Ride with it. <laughs> hey, you got all that googly gop up under your nails. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that you can serve me. Like you no. can't make me drink. Mm-hmm. You can't pass me no nothing. Cause uh, nah, you, mm, hygiene bad. No, can't. No, stop. Stay away. Patrice says I practice self care days where I will do a facial and a mask. Keep my nails and feet done. Um, daily bathroom routines. Sounds yeah. like a solid schedule. Yeah, but you know, hey, women are more deliberate and and you know into that. And and shout out to y'all. Uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> with they, they nails and their feet. That, <laughs> that's their thing right there. You know, to jump back on the, on, on the shower and bath thing. When I was younger, you know, if you took a shower that was less than 10, 15 minutes, your ass was getting back in there because you can't possibly be clean and <laughs> you move out too fast. And as I got older, I'm like, yo, how long does it take to take a shower? Um, Like, if you getting in the shower with the sole purpose of washing up and getting out, mm-hmm. it don't take that long. Now, if you want to get in there and let, I mean, look, there is cold water, there's warm water, there's hot water, there's lady hot water, and then there's orgasmic water. Um, women can handle hot ass water like I have never understood. Like, that water could be scolding to us, yes. but to them, it is just fucking right. And I'll be like, I commend you because that shit there, like I could literally feel my skin melting. But when you get in that, like you get in that shower and you make that water orgasmic, it's like you get in there, you have the sole intention of getting in there and being there for like five, 10 minutes getting out. But that water temperature is just so goddamn right that you just sit there and you in there and like, yes, lady hot water. You know what I'm talking about. But that water temperature be so right that you just want to beat one off. It, it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Look. All right. I'm not going to comment on that, but. Water temperatures hey, everywhere. It, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and i i totally agree with you, agree with you sorry uh about how females like to keep water hot as hell um i remember when me and my wife first got married we would take showers together and she would have that shit on fucking hell hot and exactly like, man i can't i can't do that i Man, you trying to burn my goddamn skin with that shit, man. And the first thing they say, why you complaining? <laughs> like, yeah. no. like, man, that shit is hot. I'm a man. <laughs> like, yo, <that's> like, yo. <laughs> I can't do it. So she finally started maneuvering it where both of us feel comfortable. That shit was still kind of hot to me, though. But hey, whatever. Look here. She'll maneuver it to where it's comfortable for her. 
still hot for you, but she mad as hell because she had to mess up her water temperature for your punk ass. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you need a man up. What you? I feel yep. my goddamn skin on fire. What the fuck you talking about? Patrice, it ain't nothing wrong with a hot shower, but it's levels to our man skin. Yeah, like, yeah. We, we, we some punks when it comes to that temperature. Like, look, it gotta be just right. Y'all go in there and y'all take that damn hot water thing and be like, yeah. And we be like, ow. Man, burn your damn penis off? No. Yeah. No, we're not going to do that. Like, look at that. That was my mammy. That looked like a pancake now. <laughs> like, <laughs> shoot. Oh, man. All right. So, sleep hygiene. Mm. To breathe or not to breathe is the question. Yeah. Man, how do you sleep? Um, sleep attire, sleep wear. Patrice, we're not punks. We just like the word a certain way. Um, <laughs> sleep attire. I'm not a. I'm not big on on sleepwear. Um, but you know, sometimes it, it just depends. Um, if I take a shower and I throw on, you know, some shorts in a in a, in a uh, undershirt, I'm good. But a lot of times I like to sleep naked. It's just, you know, just comfortable. It's like when women want to take that damn bra off and fling that joke in the corner so on the ceiling fan and let it spin around it because it pissed them off all day. So they want to make the, the the bra busy on the ceiling fan. Um, but yeah, I like I like sleeping naked um, more so than anything. Uh, I will sleep with clothes on because it's convenient. Um, you know, you never know. You might have to get up and go get the door or, you know, whatever. And then you got to search around for something to put on. And mm -hmm. ah, it's just too much. Like, yo, ah. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I'm totally the type. I like sleeping in the nude. Fuck all that. I got to let my goddamn skin breathe, man. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that, that was my routine before I had, you know, a child. So now I, I usually sleep in a t-shirt and some shorts, something like that. Mm -hmm. But if I, it's just me by myself, I'm I'm not sleeping with anything on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotta let my skin breathe, man. What gotta about breathe? Go ahead. No, nah, I'm just saying, you gotta let the goose breathe, man. You gotta let the goose yeah, breathe. Yeah, yeah. Levy says, naked, no better way to give your bed some ass and your pillow some head. <laughs> Best sleep ever. <laughs> I've heard her say, yo, you have to literally hear her say that shit. <laughs> she says it with a sarcastic laugh and shit. That's funny. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, bedding. Um, I sometimes get hot at night, but for the life of me, I have to be really, really sleepy or it has to be really, really hot for me to sleep with no blanket or sheet on me. Mm -hmm. um, I keep the ceiling fans on, um, you know, as I've gotten older, I just keep them on. But I get cold at night, no matter what the temperature is, or I feel more secure with at least a sheet on me. Um, but you got to have the right, right bedding in order to to do that. Um, I'm not a betting OG. Sometimes I buy the goddamn fleece, goddamn blankets. They be thin, but they hold heat. And you end up sweating, then you gotta go take a shower again when you get up in the morning. But I, I gotta have my bedding. Um, as far as bedding, I, I'm pretty much good with anything. But one thing I definitely have to have, and my wife fucking hates it, is a fan. Like <laughs> it be in the middle of winter, I have to have. I got like a little fan, like I don't know if you guys can see it, like the size of this screen right here. It's literally that big around, but I have it where it points directly on my head. So me and my son, we're used to it now. We're good. Right. But as far as having a big fan or the ceiling fan on, that's a no fly zone. So, um, I don't, I even though I keep my ceiling fans on, I hate having fans on at night. Um, 
one, <laughs> um, I don't like the air blowing on me. And some fans, I don't like the noise. I know some people who need a fan because they they need that that white noise when they go to sleep. Yeah. Um, to me, that's irritating for me because when I go to sleep, my he- like like it, it's true. When you lose a sense or one sense is degraded, other ones get heightened. So it's like when I'm asleep, my when I, my vision is gone, my hearing gets more acute. So mm-hmm. I. I I, sometimes I really can't do the fan, or I'll just I'll just be up, and that's probably why I haven't been sleeping too well lately. Because you know, fans are on. And it's like I hear the fans, I feel the fans, I know they on. And it's like, but you know, to a degree, they feel good. So, um, yeah, I might. I'll tell you some of the best sleeping though is when you got a fan on and it's raining. You got your window up or crack? Oh man, game over, game uh, over. I, I I just cracked my goddamn window, but the way my windows are, the rain comes in, so I just gotta close my windows. So <laughs> <laughs> I hate the way my windows are. Like my, my windows are, are, are in a way that if I open it, you know, rain gonna come in, and you know, yeah, I can't do that. I feel you. Well, again, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in with us. Uh, this was a fun but uh, necessary conversation. We, we hope someone learned something from this. <laughs> I certainly did. <laughs> At least got a good laugh out of it. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, but again, oh, lovey, you guys can find us on all of your major podcast platforms. Uh, we are on Amazon, so you know if you guys want to be subscribers there, you get more content where we go into more intimate conversations and. No whole bars, as they say on those conversations. That's, that's Apple. That's Apple that we're gonna do that on. Okay, thank you, Apple. But uh, again, you can find us on uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, of course, um, Instagram, and we are out here. So yeah. hashtag Taking Our Life Podcast. Yes, sir. Um, what else we got? Oh, before we get up out of here, um, I've been talking about it for a minute. We're going to be doing a giveaway soon. The, uh, I got the sling. I mean, the Ruck sling pack. They just came in the other day. So we're going to be doing a giveaway for these. That's going to be coming soon. Uh, got a whole giveaway thing going up. Um, the Ruck solar pack is going to be part of that giveaway. So definitely stay tuned in. Um so we can get that popping. Uh, details will be coming soon. Um, True. It may be a riddle. It may not be. We don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe simple is, is, is subscribing to all of our platforms. You never know. Maybe. Uh, it's coming, though. It's coming. It's coming. For it's sure. coming. Um, again, if you have any topic suggestions, uh, email us, king and i 369 at gmail.com. That's K I N G. A N D E Y E three six nine at gmail.com. If you have any top suggestions, uh, feedback, if you want to be a guest on the show, let us know. Hit us up on email, text us, inbox us, Simba, Pony Express, Home and Pigeon, whatever. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else did I have? Um, I think that's all I had. I think that's it then. Uh, yeah, that is all I had. All right. Well, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in. And this has been another segment of the King and I Life Podcast. And we will holler at y'all later. <laughs>